Gospel, chapter 1, verse 67. Uh, if you are able, when you get there, would you stand with me as we honor God and the reading of His Word? And Lee, the scriptures will be just on the point, so you can back up there if you want to, okay? There you go. Then his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, because He has visited and provided redemption for His people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of His servant David, just as He spoke by the mouth of His holy prophets in ancient times, salvation from our enemies and from the clutches of those who hate us. He has dealt mercifully with our fathers and remembered His holy covenant. The oath that He swore to our father Abraham, He has given us the privilege since we have been rescued from our enemy's clutches to serve Him without fear, in holiness and righteousness in His presence all our days. And child, you will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare His ways, to give His people knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of our God's merciful compassion, the dawn from on high will visit us to shine on those who live in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The child grew up and became spiritually strong, and he was in the wilderness. until the day of His public appearance to Israel. May God give His blessing to the reading and now the preaching of His holy word. May our Lord Jesus Christ forever be praised. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We are continuing our journey through the gospel according to Luke. And so far, so far we saw in the first chapter, in the first verses, we saw Luke's introduction, and that was very important. By the way, if you didn't get to see that or any of the other messages, pick up a copy of the DVD or watch on YouTube to get caught up to where we are. But in that first message, we talked about how Luke is writing from the perspective of a historian, of, a, of someone who has investigated all the things that have happened. And Luke was writing so that we can have certainty of the things in which we believe. After that, we met Zechariah and Elizabeth. Zechariah and Elizabeth were an elderly couple, and they were barren. They had no children, and Zechariah was a priest serving before the Lord. And through that message, we saw Gabriel coming to Zechariah in the temple and telling him that he was going to have a son. And there was a miraculous conception of a child, even to this elderly couple who was barren. And we know that child as John the Baptist. The next week, we saw what we call the Annunciation. The angel Gabriel comes to Mary, the the little virgin Mary, the little girl, and tells her that she shall conceive by the power of the Holy Spirit so that what is brought forth from her will be called the Son of God. Well, after that, Mary then goes and visits this Elizabeth that we've already met because Mary and Elizabeth were cousins. And when Mary walks into the room... Elizabeth is filled with joy. The babe in Elizabeth's womb leaps for joy. And Mary sings a song of joy called the Magnificat. And we said in that sermon that joy is the presence of Jesus. And that we can have joy not just at Christmas, but all throughout the year because Jesus is with us. And the presence of Jesus is the presence of joy. Last week, We saw the, excuse me, the supernatural birth, the supernatural name, and the supernatural ministry of John the Baptist as he was born and and he was given his name on the eighth day. Now let me jump ahead real quick. Stay with me. Next week, next week we we will be looking at Luke 2 and the traditional Christmas story. I hope, my prayer is, 
that the Christmas story found in Luke chapter 2 will be richer and more meaningful to you this year because we have covered all the previous verses to it so that we see that the Christmas story is not isolated. It's not an island. It doesn't sit there by itself in the Bible. It is part of a larger context of the Bible. It is part of God's unfolding story of Him sending our Savior, Jesus Christ, into the world. Now, this week, long introduction... Maybe that'll mean a short sermon. Got your hopes up anyway, huh? This week, we're looking at what happens immediately after John, whom we know as John the Baptist, receives that supernatural name. Without going back and doing the whole sermon from last week again, remember that everybody in Zechariah and Elizabeth's family thought that they would name the child Zechariah because that was the common thing to do. You name your firstborn son after you. And they said, when Elizabeth said, no, his name's going to be John, they all said, well, nobody in your family's named John. Why would you name him John? So we better go ask his daddy what the name is going to be. And they give Zechariah, who, remember, his mouth has been shut. He cannot speak. They give him a writing tablet, and he writes on the tablet, his name is John. And when he writes that, his mouth is open, his tongue is loosed, and he is now able to speak. Let's get into the context. Let's get into this story. His father, John's father, Zechariah, this old man, remember, he is there, he says his name is John, and at that moment, look again at the text in verse 67, then his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit. At the moment of Zechariah's obedience to the command of God given by the angel, his mouth is opened and he is filled with the Holy Spirit. I call it a song of praise. Really, it probably, Zechariah probably didn't sing it like we know of singing. But it is poetic and I believe it could have been set to ancient music at some time. It is a song of praise. But before we get into the song of praise... I want you to see what makes this song of praise so amazing. Are you still with me? Do you remember about Zechariah, why his mouth was shut? Zechariah's mouth was shut. The angel said, you will be silent until the birth of this child because you did not believe the message I brought to you. Zechariah's mouth was shut and he was silent for nine months. Do you think Elizabeth probably appreciated that? You, you ladies who are um, on up into to years, would you have appreciated that if, if all of a sudden you found out that you're going to be pregnant again in nine months and husband, you just be quiet? Might have been God's mercy to Elizabeth, huh? Zachariah's mouth was shut because he didn't believe. Zachariah's mouth was shut because he doubted the message that God gave through the angel Gabriel. And in this, think about this, for nine months, Zechariah has been in silent meditation about the grace of God. About that God was gracious for just shutting his mouth. God didn't say, all right, you don't believe, I'm done with you. How many of you are glad that God hasn't said, all right, you didn't believe me, I'm done with you. How many of you are glad for God's grace that says, All right, you've doubted, I'm going to send a lightning bolt. Pew! (laughs) For nine months, Zechariah has had silence to meditate on God's grace that was given to him when he doubted what the Lord said. Also, Zechariah has had nine months to meditate on God's faithfulness. Throughout that nine months, Zechariah is thinking about what the angel said, and he's thinking about the miracle that God has done. And and he says to himself, I I imagine again and again, how could I have doubted? How could I have not believed an angel was standing there before me? How could I have doubted? Why didn't I believe? Oh, but God is faithful. And listen to me, people. What God is doing is based on God's faithfulness, not our faithfulness. What God is sustaining in this world 
And what God is doing in this church and what God is unfolding in His plan is not based on our faithfulness but on His faithfulness. And God is faithful. God is is faithful. When we are faithless, when we are filled with doubts, when we are filled with anxiety, when we just can't wrap our mind around what God is doing, God is gracious to us. He knows we're merely humans and we are sinful and we can't get it all. And He is faithful in completing what He has said He's going to do. That blesses my heart. And I hope that it blesses yours. Zechariah, he's had these nine months to think about this. Nine months to ponder the grace of God and, and to meditate on the faithfulness of God. And then we dive into his song of praise. Point number one, Zechariah praised God for his provision. He praises God as he's filled with the Holy Spirit and, and his words reflect the character and the nature of God. The first one is he's praising God for his provision. Verse 68, praise the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has visited us, visited and provided redemption for His people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of His servant David. Zechariah realizes that God has done something for him. Listen to me. Zechariah realizes that God has done something for him that he could not do for himself. Folks, there are things that you can't do for yourself. There are things that you cannot provide for yourselves. There are things that just have to come from God. Amen? Can I get a witness? There are things that we can't do. If you don't believe that, I'm here to inform you this morning. You are not omnipotent. You can't do it all. You can't understand it all. You will never be able to have it all. It's got to just come from God. There are things we can't do for ourselves. There are things that we can't provide for ourselves. And, and those of you who have been under my preaching all these years know that I, I see God's work and revealing Himself in nature and creation. Think about this. You can't provide air for yourself. Do you all appreciate air? I like breathing. How about you? Have, have any of you ever had any trouble with breathing? Those of you who have asthma know the importance of air, right? If you've ever, uh, my, my dear saint had gone on to be with the Lord Grandmother, one of her sayings that she said all the time, anything that bothered her, it was, that just smothers me to death. And she would do like this. That just smothers me to death. Anybody else? Like she couldn't get enough air. You don't appreciate air until you can't get it, right? You can't make air. You can't provide air. You can't provide sunshine. How many of you have had plans uh, for an outdoor event where sunshine was really important? And you woke up that morning and it's cloudy and threatening rain. Were you able to just generate some sunshine, make those clouds go away? No. Why? You can't provide sunshine. Only God can provide sunshine. Even life itself. Folks, you can't will yourself to live. You can't will yourself another day. You can't decide, I'm going to live until the ripe old age of 97. Listen to me, folks. This may be an important point for somebody. Listen to me. Hey, listen to me. You can't decide that you're going to live a good long life, that you're going to live to be 96 years old, and the night before you die, you get everybody around you, you settle all the scores, you make sure everything's taken care of, and everybody gathers around your bed, sing Amazing Grace, pull the covers up to your nose, and then go on to be with the Lord. You're not guaranteed that. Your life, how long you live, is not up to you. That comes from God. There are things you can't do for yourself. There are things you can't provide for yourself. Folks, we can't save ourselves. Can't do it. It cannot be done. What did, did Zacharias say? He praised the Lord, the God of Israel, because He's visited and provided. Who provided? He provided redemption for His people. A horn of salvation for the house of David. If you're planning on being saved by figuring it all out yourself, it'll never be done. If you're planning on being saved by being good enough yourself, it can never be done. 
If you're planning on being saved by giving enough to the church yourself, you don't have enough. If you're planning on being saved by anything of yourself, you will be disappointed. Zechariah praised God for what God had provided for him. God had provided for him and his people redemption. Redemption means bought. Bought out of what? Bought out of sin. The wages of sin is what? But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. He provided redemption. He provided a buying out of sin for us. Folks, listen to me. God has provided for you. You have reason to rejoice. God has provided the things that you need, that you enjoy, the things that keep you comfortable, the things that keep you fed. God has provided all of this around us that we see in His gracious goodness. But more important than any of that, God has provided for us redemption. And folks, if you realize that God has provided for you redemption, you've got reason to praise Him. If you're saved, you've got reason to praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Number two, Zechariah praised God for his patience. Look there on the screen with me, verse 72. He has dealt mercifully with our fathers. That word is very important. He has dealt mercifully. Mercifully with our fathers and remembered his holy covenant. Verse 33, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham. Then skip down to verse 78. Because of our God's merciful compassion. The dawn from on high will visit us. Aren't you glad that God in His mercy is patient? Well, if you were here Wednesday night, we looked at an instance where God was not patient with Ananias and Sapphira. I'm glad that God is patient with me. I'm going to say it again. Praise the Lord that God is patient with me. One more time so you know I mean it. I praise the Lord that He is patient with me. I, I told the Wednesday night folks this. Folks, if, if we woke up in the morning... When we opened our eyes in the morning, if we had a clean slate before the Lord, we were wiped clean before the Lord, and if we got what we deserved at the moment we deserved it, most of us wouldn't make it to breakfast. Now, some of you may be real sweet and make it to lunchtime, but I wouldn't make it to breakfast. If I got what I deserved at the moment I deserved it, thank the Lord that He is patient with me. Anybody else? I just I don't believe your testimony you're giving. Anybody else glad the Lord is patient with you? Zechariah, remember, he's had nine months. He's been thinking about this. He's been meditating on this. He goes back to that day. Why didn't I just say, thank you, Lord, for that message, and I believe it? Why, did, why couldn't I just... You think he's kicking himself? Just kicking himself. Lord, why didn't I believe you back there at the temple? Why didn't I believe you when you sent Gabriel to me? And he's kicking himself, but he's glad that the Lord is being in His mercy, was patient. He gives us, Zechariah in his song, gives us the historical perspective of patience. Now, Zechariah, because he was a priest and because he was taught the law in the Old Testament, he knew of all of the failings of his people. Had Zechariah's people, the Jewish people, had they failed? Yes, again and again. He knew that they had faltered. He knew that they fell away, that they backslid again and again. And Zechariah knew that God had every right to just abandon them and go on. God had, the, had every right, according to the faithfulness of His people, to do that. And yet in His mercy... God was patient. He mentions Abraham. He was patient with Abraham as Abraham lacked faith. And then Abraham disobeyed God. And God was patient with Abraham in his mercy. Then Isaac and Jacob. God was patient with all of these generations of Zechariah's people again and again and again. In his mercy, he shows patience. And then, at the moment that these verses are being, are, the, the verses are happening. In his due time, God does what? Brings about redemption. Redemption based on the covenant that he made so long ago. Based on the provision of God and based on the patience of God. God is patient with you and God is patient with me. 
And he's patient with you and me in the covenant he made with us. What is the covenant that God made with us? The covenant that God made with us is, if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart you believe and are justified, with the mouth you confess and are saved, as the Scripture has said, anyone who trusts in Him will never be put to shame. What's the covenant that God has made with us? That if we will call upon the name of the Lord for salvation, we shall be saved. That is God's covenant, not based on our faithfulness, but based on His faithfulness. Not based on our goodness, but based on His patience given to us in mercy. Can't you see how patient the Lord's been with you? Many of you in here were saved late in life. Many of you I, I baptized as adults. You were saved late in life. Can you look back over those years and realize, man, God was so patient with me. God didn't give up on me. Aren't you glad? Praise the Lord. Somebody preach with me a little bit. Aren't you glad that He didn't give up on you? Zechariah was glad. He rejoiced because God didn't give up on the sons of Abraham. He rejoiced that God didn't give up on the sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the house of David, all the way up to Zechariah at the time this was written. And I'm here to tell you today that God is patient. Listen, He is patient, and He has not given up on you. I pray that today, as, as verse 78 says, because of God's merciful compassion, the dawn from on high will visit us. I pray today that the heavens will be opened. The dawn, the light from on high will be here today so that you'll realize how patient He has been with us. Number one, Zechariah praised God for His provision. Number two, God, Zechariah praised God for His patience. Number three, Zechariah praised God for His peace. Look at verse 74 with me. Since we have been rescued from our enemies, from our enemies' clutches, to serve Him without fear, in holiness and righteousness, in His presence all our days. And child, you will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare His ways, to give His people knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of sins. In verse number 79, the next screen, to shine on those who live in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet. I love it. To guide our feet into the way of peace. Zechariah praised God for his peace. The peace that passes all understanding that comes only from God. Do you have peace? Do you have peace? Now, I'm not talking about the stuff that's going on around you. Many of you have realized this. That things can be so chaotic and so stressful and de-stressing. But if you know the Lord, you can open your Bible to the Psalms, the Proverbs. You can take in the bread of life. You can breathe deeply and feel the power of God at work in you. You can sing a, a song of praise to the Lord when everything's going wrong, falling apart. Anybody else besides me know what I'm talking about? Everything going wrong, everything falling apart. And you just get with the Lord. And you just feel, praise the Lord. You know what I'm talking about? You just feel it. The peace of God, the peace of God comes over you. Zechariah praised God for his peace because God wants to rescue us, he says. Rescue us from the clutches of our enemy. You see, the, the enemy's at war with us. What's the opposite of peace? It's war. What is our enemy? Who is our enemy? Satan and our own sin. And He has rescued us from the clutches of our enemy. He saved us from the clutches of our enemy. Do you have peace? Has God, listen to me, God will reach down 
He will reach down and pick you up out of the miry clay. God will reach down to where you are in your sin. Listen, even in your doubt, even in your unbelief, He will reach down and draw you up and sit you high upon the rock. Do you have peace? Folks, you have peace in the presence of God. Do you have peace? Peace from the darkness into light. Peace from death into life. The thing that made the difference, don't forget this. The thing that made the difference in Zechariah was the Holy Spirit. Back at the very first verse we read, verse 67, Then his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what made the difference. That's what made the difference back then. That's what made the difference today. And friends, today, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is here. He is here in this place. He is here in this room, and there's quite enough power of the Holy Spirit in this room today to save whoever is here. There's quite enough power of the Holy Spirit here today to grant peace to those that are stressed. There's quite enough power of the Holy Spirit today to grant light, light for darkness and life for death. God has provided for you. God has provided for you. God has been patient with you. In His mercy, praise the Lord. And God offers you peace. You have reason to praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, I pray this morning that Your people have, have heard Your Word. We believe that Your Word is powerful that it is strong in and of itself, and we know, Lord, that it has been proclaimed today. We pray, Lord, for liberty, for people to respond to that word in faith, to join this church by letter or believer's baptism, to recommit their life, to come and kneel at this altar and, and carry some burden before you and give it to you. Lord, I pray that in this time of invitation that you would grant liberty for those to make decisions. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.